So you're not quite sold on the hype surrounding Counter-Strike 2. That's understandable. Let me change your mind. My name is Brayden, and welcome to Valve Guides. Given the current landscape of competitive gaming, it's easy to become exhausted and cynical as monetization models have wreaked havoc on a once pure genre. But before you dismiss Counter-Strike 2 as just another game designed to empty both your wallet and your soul, let's delve into why CS2 is far more than just a reskin or a decent patch and what makes it stand apart from the competition. Whether you're a diehard fan or a newcomer to the series, here's why CS2 is actually a huge deal and you should be hyped about it. Let's begin by addressing the game mechanics. Many have seen the three videos that Valve released highlighting the new smoke mechanics, sub-tick updates, and map overhauls, and still remain unimpressed. Can a new smoke mechanic really be considered a significant enough change to be showcased as one of the most important changes to one of the biggest games of all time? Will the new maps truly be different enough, and will they play better? Are sub-tick updates even going to be an actual improvement? These are all valid concerns, and at a quick glance, these things can seem like manufactured ways to justify labeling CS2 as a sequel rather than just another update. However, it is precisely this list of new features that has me feeling extremely optimistic about Counter-Strike 2. As a game that thrives on precision and balance, even minor changes can have significant and potentially game-breaking impacts. We've seen Valve disrupt CSGO with seemingly thoughtless content several times. What's truly noteworthy about the current state of CS2's rollout is Valve's dedication to innovating at a pace that's appropriate for Counter-Strike, making incremental yet transformative improvements that enhance gameplay. Now, I'm under no illusion that the CS2 beta is running perfectly without quirky bugs and issues like enabling wall hacks in the console even on competitive mode. Oh sh bro, this is like wall hack. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Although as of making this video, they have already fixed this issue just within hours of it being discovered. And here's another video that showcases Valve's attitude towards this even before the private playtest. So the first day we play tested, we played for 10 hours. We went, we went in. The very first day we didn't fucking move for 10 hours. After we were done, there were like a lot of sound issues. But before you turn off your brain and stop listening, they stayed at the office after a 10 hour play test. We all went to dinner. They revamped the entire sound engine within uh, Source 2 and reloaded an entire new Source 2 engine with the redesigned audio for the next day. And it was so much better. So like, oh no, like, so like they, they go hard, man. So I'm just trying to put in perspective for people that are like, they don't do anything, they don't care, blah, 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 blah. Between this anecdotal story and a hotfix that we've already seen Valve implement within hours of discovering an issue, and the fact that they've tweeted this protocol to report bugs that's supposedly going to streamline their process, it seems like Valve is showcasing a new level of dedication for support for both tweaks and improvements to the game. Let's move on to community support. Valve has developed powerful tools for community and map makers and are expected to release mod and skin tools as well. Not to mention it looks like we're going to get a pretty seamless transition into CS2 from CSGO, making it the perfect time for dedicated, former, and new players alike to hop in without too many growing pains. Valve is not just introducing new tools for map making, they are releasing an entirely new system for map creation on a new, more powerful engine while simultaneously simplifying the creation process, making it more accessible than ever before. Valve have also stated that we can expect to see a Source 2 item workshop, which will be available later on in the limited play test. Combine these powerful new tools with the idea that we're likely going to see official mod support that goes beyond purely map building, one can only imagine the new possibilities for custom community content. That alone is an enormous deal. Map making tools can often be confused as modding tools, while there's certainly some overlap in what they can accomplish, map making tools focus on designing and creating custom maps or levels, while mod support enables players to create, modify, or enhance pretty much any aspect of the game. Mod tools can be used to create more specific and precise custom game modes, custom weapons and items, character models, AI logic, animation, and so much more. Modding can go as far as even totally converting the game into something else entirely. A great example of this is the Galactic Contention mod for the game Squad. This takes all of the hardcore shooter mechanics of Squad and essentially converts it into, at least in my opinion, the perfect Star Wars game. Gary's mod is a game that is simply built to support community mods. That's it. That's the game. 
and it's awesome. My dream is to see Gary's Mod level customization introduced to CS2 all on the Source 2 engine, but that might be a little bit too much wishful thinking. I assume the legality of providing and hosting such a wide array of mods is a pretty slippery slope of copyright law. Everything stated thus far goes to support my final and most exciting reason why you should be hyped for CS2, a future-proofed experience. Counter-Strike has thrived since 2004 on the Source engine and CSGO since 2013. By rebuilding building the game from the ground up using the Source 2 engine, it seems that Valve's primary intention from the get-go was ensuring a long and successful life cycle for the game. Valve has equipped themselves to deliver powerful updates and changes in a more time-effective manner. This, combined with what we've been hearing regarding the devs' dedication to making massive improvements within a day of receiving feedback, is certainly an exciting prospect. The real kicker is it looks like we're going to be getting a new level of first-party support combined with the most accessible and powerful third-party creation tools we may have ever seen. As we've seen, Valve has approached Counter-Strike 2 with an astonishing level of intentionality, and it shows upon inspection. Between finding the perfect balance of innovative but not too overwhelming changes to mechanics, empowering community tools, and future-proofing the experience, Valve has truly raised the bar for themselves. They're not trying to compete with anything but CSGO, while still being sure to implement small features from other notable titles. Valve are creating a game that will not only win over new players, but but also reignite the passion of longtime fans. If you have doubts, that's fair. We've been burned one too many times by greedy, out-of-touch game publishers. So I'm not saying this lightly when I say I am truly optimistic for a long and beautiful future for Counter-Strike 2. Like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at BradenUG and subscribe to my personal channel where I will be uploading a ton of non-CS related content. Also be sure to join our community discord with the link below. This has been Valve Guides. My name is Brayden. I'll see you next time. Stay amazing. Yeah.